Okay, so welcome to our second lesson, and this lesson is titled The Vector Nature of Momentum and Drawing Vector Diagrams. So if you remember in the last session, we I did talk about the fact that we're going to be talking about vector quantities as well as scalar quantities. So at least by the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand the vector nature of momentum, understand that momentum is a vector and why and also be able to draw vector diagrams so yeah to continue then our discussion on momentum it is important to know that uh, momentum is a vector quantity this means that it has both magnitude and direction so remember we said momentum we can represent it by p and it is a vector quantity what do we mean? We say a vector quantity has both uh, magnitude or size, magnitude or size, as well as direction. So what do you mean? For example, after you calculate the momentum of an object, you always include the direction. So what do I mean by that? So normally, let's say you calculate the momentum of uh, some object and you find the answer to be uh, 10 kilograms meters per second. So this is the unit of measure for momentum. But remember, we, we always have to include the direction. So that's why that is, that is the direction. So this would be your unit, this would be your size, or magnitude 10 would be your size or magnitude. This would just be the unit of measure, kg meters per second. And then this would be your direction. So a vector quantity always has magnitude, I've forgotten E, and direction. You always have to include that direction. Momentum is not the only vector quantity, velocity is also a vector quantity but then how do we differentiate between vector quantities and scalar quantities um scalar quantities on the other hand only have a direction so we have scalar i'm lying they only have magnitude they only have magnitude and no direction no direction so for example you can take mass mass for example when you report the answer for mass or normally when you read a scenario with a mass they will just say um, an object with a mass of 10 kg so you see yeah they've provided the unit the, the the size or the magnitude which is 10 this is just the unit of measure kilograms but you see here like there unlike there with uh, vectors there is no direction too so there is no direction you can never say 10 kg uh, east that doesn't actually make any sense so that is the difference between um, vectors and scalars and it's important for you to understand these differences and also be able to tell which uh, physical quantities are scalar quantities and which physical quantities are vector quantities here we've talking about momentum we've talked about velocity here for example we've talking about mass now it's your task to go and find other scalar quantities and vector quantities so that you know them so when we talk about vectors we have to know how to draw something called vector diagrams so vector diagrams so before we go that remember when you draw a vector if you remember this from grade 11 you simply draw an arrow with an arrow head there and this part we call it the head of the vector and this part we call it the tail of the vector so this is where the tail this is where the vector starts and this is where the vector ends and the length of this vector just shows the the magnitude so for example if you compare two vectors let's say this is vector one and vector 2 intuitively you just know because this vector this arrow is longer than vector 2 is this the magnitude of it is greater than that of vector 1 so we need to know how to draw those vector diagrams and the method that we're going to be using is called the tail to head 
method you'll see why it's called that so you're going to be using the tail to head method of drawing those um method of drawing those vector diagrams so you know let us take an example let us take an example that we can do quickly so that you can see this in practice okay so we have a question here and it reads something like this so this is a question that i just created um it says that consider a ball with an initial momentum of 10 kilograms meters per second to the right remember momentum is a vector so they've included the magnitude as well as the direction and bounces of the wall with a momentum of five kilograms meters per second in the opposite direction so the opposite of right we know that it's left the first question says calculate the change in momentum and the second question says represent the vectors graphically so how do we go about doing that so i normally like to start by first drawing the the situation that the question describes so we have a ball and it's moving at an initial momentum pi of 10 kg meters per second and then it bounces off the wall and then it's moving now with a final momentum of 5 kg meters per second all right cool so did so now the first question wanted us to calculate the change in momentum before we do that let us then uh, decide our direction let's say right is positive and then left is negative we're done with that and then remember that the formula for changing momentum would be changing p or delta p equals to pf minus p i so this is initial momentum final momentum so you can tell now if you write down what is given to us we know that pi is 10 kg meters per second and it's to the right meaning it is positive so we have 10 kg meters per second and then this one is going the opposite direction and we said that opposite direction is left and left we decided that it was uh, pf it was negative so that's why we include that negative there in front of the 5 kg meters per, per second cool now we see that we have everything and we can actually calculate the change in momentum and if you put that in a calculator we'll have pf minus 5 minus 10 which will give you uh, minus 15 kilograms meters per second because it's negative it means that the change the change in momentum therefore the change in momentum is um 15 kg meters per second to the left but now let us now try to sketch all of these vectors we have three vectors if you notice we have the change in p we have the final uh, pf which is the final momentum and the initial momentum so how do we represent all of this graphically so remember that we have our initial vector pi and our final vector pf and we want to now graph everything all these vectors including the change in p which is pf minus pi graphically so to do that you can have an axis draw a sort of an axis there it doesn't have to be perfect and then let us just, just say for interest's sake we say this is just draw that quickly okay so now we have drawn our axis so this will be zero up to maybe 16 let's say each block here would represent so a block would be equal to um one one kg meters per second each single block and i'm realizing that i made a mistake earlier here i had written negative 10 but remember it was actually a positive because it was going to the right so why did i write that negative 
there i wrote this negative there because of so this is initial it was positive 10 because it was our objective remember in the question was going to the right but now if you look at this equation here to find the change in p to find the vector that vector of change in p we have to minus pf from pi meaning that we have actually now this vector becomes negative because of this negative sign so it will kind of rotate so let me write it p out now if you rotate it because of the negative it actually now becomes 10 kg meters per second hope that is making sense so now let's draw all of our vectors so to draw that we say okay what is our um initial vector so we want to draw our initial vector so the magnitude of that initial vector is 10 it is 10 and remember it was going in which direction initially it was going in this direction it becomes negative because of this negative uh, uh, value there in our equation so we have to draw it now facing left as it has become negative so let us start this vector we can start it let's start it at 15 we can start a vector anywhere we can draw it from anywhere and if one block represent represent one kg meters per second it means that this vector will actually form 16 and 15 you have to count 10 blocks so 10 blocks will kind of bring us to 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 five so let's calculate that one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that is the magnitude of that vector label it you can say pi is equal to uh, 10 kg meters per second and it's facing left because it was negative so hence it's facing there but because we're using something like i mentioned the tail to head method that i spoke about so to draw the second vector the the tail the tail of the second vector which is in this case pf has to be joined at the head of this one so the tail of the first vector and that first vector we said is five it was already negative meaning it's also facing this direction so we'll draw its tail and then we count about five blocks and then that is its magnitude so here we have pf equals to five kg meters per second it's also facing in that direction because it's facing to the left and it's negative and to find the change in p it's almost like the resultant vector of the the tail of the resultant vector has to be at the tail of the first vector pi so the, the tail will be there and the head has to be at the head of the last vector in this case the last the head of the last vector is here then we just join it and you find that your pf if you calculate the number of blocks for pf you find it's one two three up to 15 hence it's going to be 15 kg meters per second and it's also facing to the left so it also confirms that calculation that we did earlier algebraically that we found the change in p to be 15 kg meters per second i know it's a slightly difficult concept to grasp but you actually have to understand how to draw these vectors and have a lot of practice with them let's let us see let us try to do another calculation very quickly so let us consider a situation similar to the one earlier but now there's the ball hits the wall and instead of bouncing back it actually continues through the wall and with a momentum of 5 kg meters per second so still direction let's just say right is positive and then left is negative so you can see all our vectors actually in that direction now and then we can do the same thing our change in p would just be pf minus pi so pf pf is 5 minus 10 that will give us an answer of minus 5 kg meters per second so let us do the same thing and try to represent this graphically we can do a similar thing and draw an axis so now we have drawn our exit is one two three four five six seven minus one minus two minus three minus four 
minus 5 minus 6 remember we can start from anywhere but remember because before we move to here because it's negative it means that our change in p is actually 5 kg meters per second to the left you'll see now when we draw it graphically that it's actually going to be facing that way so we want to draw a, a vector a, an initial vector with uh, about what do you call this an initial vector with about where is our initial vector now um yeah about 10 kg meters per second so we have that initial vector we said it's 10 kg meters per second but because of our equation here it will become negative meaning it will rotate you see it was going this way it rotates now to go to the other direction so we have to just count five spa 10 spaces i'm gonna try counting them from here so this vector will start here the tail will be here its head will be somewhere there so if you count from 5 to minus 5, so that's about 10. You can just label it. Say PI. I'm in a hurry now. So PI is 10 kg meters per second. I don't want these videos to be long. And then we're using the tail to head method, the same thing we did previously. So the, the tail of the second vector, which is PF, has to now be at the head of this one. And then it's 5 uh, units long so it's gonna come and finish there and then we have pf equals to our uh, 5 kg meters per second remember it's still facing in that direction and then to find the resultant or the change in p that vector we have to draw the tail of that resultant at the tail of the first vector and the head at the head of the last vector which in this case was pf i know the drawing looks terrible then we actually find the change in p if you count the number of spaces you'd find that it's also five kg meters per second and it's facing to to the left and we agree that the left is negative so that's why this answer was negative as well so yeah this brings us to the end of this lesson i know uh, when we're working with vectors it's a bit of a, a tricky uh what you call topic but yeah please practice it if you have to rewatch the video a couple of times it's okay and then you can ask me questions in the whatsapp group thank you